Okay, so we're back with another episode of the Orville. As always, I'm Al. This is the Geek in Review. I'm going to be talking about the Orville Season 3, Episode 5, A Tale of Two Topas. So, wow, man, yeah, there was some stuff going on, a lot of themes in this episode, a lot of surprise twists as well. I do think the show is getting more established and finding its own foot, and as I've said before, the pace of some of the first few episodes didn't really work for me, but the last two, yeah man, these have been absolutely solid. I think the last few episodes were getting callbacks and nods and storylines from season one and season two as well, but I'll get into that, so as always, this is going to contain spoilers. So yeah, it was a pretty good intro and I like that Ed's writing to his daughter even though she's not going to be able to read it. And we haven't seen the crew do this sort of thing on the, you know, like exploring a planet before. And using Isaac to take the hits of the booby traps was great. And I did think they were going to lean a little bit more into the full kind of Raiders of the Lost Ark thing. And I was kind of sad that they didn't because, again, there's not a lot of comedy in this episode but that's not a criticism comedy wouldn't work in this episode and if you've already seen it you know why but if not we're going to get to that and it is a pretty Kelly focused episode and I like once you get back to the ship and they were discovering the alien artifact she was just like look um, my shift's done so I'm, I'm just going to go home because that's what people are like in real life let's be honest so yeah, by the title of the episode, it is a Topa episode, and how big are these kids, like Claire's kids and Topa, compared to season one and two? Because it's been a few years due to the pandemic and the whole network shift thing with this show, but this episode is so focused on Topa and his backstory and what's going on in Mocklin society, and also bigger stuff as well. And I like the intro and it made me realise that I do miss using the holodeck as a story device in Trek, it's just so much fun and you can lend to so many interesting stories and I'm kind of sad that Star Trek can't do that because it's not a show that really has holodeck technology anymore. And when the episode starts off you sort of think, or I thought it was going to be like a Wesley Crusher type thing where he's following Kelly about the ship. And we get to see what a number one does on board the Orville and it's all management stuff and she's pretty great at it. She's got to handle a let's say unique HR situation and yeah like we see what Kelly's doing on this ship by episode 5. We still don't know what number one's doing in Star Trek, they pretty much get rid of her again this week in Strange New Worlds and review of that's coming up later on. But yeah I forgot how much I liked Kelly. She hasn't done much since the start of the season, so it's nice that we're getting a catch up with her and having Topper with her shows her or shows us what life is like aboard ship without drowning out the other cast. And yeah, we need more of this, if not in the Orville, definitely in Star Trek. We just need, you know, a bit of an episode or maybe a full episode where nothing's happening and they've just got nothing to do and that's what life aboard ship's like. And as I mentioned at the start of the episode, they're picking up a story thread from one of the earlier seasons with Topa being born female, which I'll be honest I'd forgotten about, but more Topa means Bortus and Clyden, finally, they've been sorely missing from this season if you ask me. They're one of the best sitcom couples ever, and this show uses them to great comic effect mostly, but this episode focuses on the relationship dynamic and their culture as well. And speaking of culture, there is a real clash of them on this episode and personalities here. But to start off with, Kelly handles it well initially, I'll get to that in a minute, and are those Batman gauntlets that were on that table? But this episode picks up with Topa being in a pretty dark place, if you've ever known anyone that suffered depression you know that Topa's showing all the signs, and what's weird is that Isaac's the only one that picks up on it before you know all the living crew flesh members with emotions that are people, and yet this is a sort of bad but good thing in this episode that in the real world we can't ignore this stuff day to day and it is important to check up on people so just remember that folks. But anyway, the show raises huge questions when Kelly helps Topa fill in the blanks of his past and is what she is doing here cool? I'm not sure it is. At best she's going to cause havoc with life on the ship and these two people's relationships with their kid and at worst it could split a family apart and also have bigger consequences as well that they bring up. 
and there's a lot of people in this episode confronting a lot of things and I like when Bortus says, look, the society we live in isn't perfect and he's right, no society is but the whole confrontation between Kelly and Clyton was more interesting to me as these people are going to be stuck on a ship together and they're really clashing heads several times throughout this episode. It's kind of a shame there wasn't a scene where Ed had to stand up or stand in for her and there's also a shame that there wasn't really any of the Ed Kelly chat this episode would have really lended itself to it. And this episode just gets keeping deeper and deeper, you find out that Bortus is actually the one that gave his son access to the information on his past, and when one parent wants one thing and another wants the other, that's a tricky situation, and Peter Macron, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, that plays Bortus, maybe gives the best performance he's ever given in this show, in one of the scenes in this episode, and there's a couple look, everyone is really strong in this episode, there's no real bad acting or writing here, but he really steals the show in a couple of scenes and really makes you feel the weight of the episode. And as I said, it keeps getting deeper when this comes down to the fact that the Union needs the Mulklands to help in the current war against the Kalon. And yeah, that was a great angle that I didn't see coming. It's really big picture stuff for the crew and maybe even the Union itself. So yeah, like I say, this episode just, it, it's like an onion, it just keeps going and going and going. And I'm really happy with the way this is written. They don't shy away from anything and they do ask some pretty hard questions. But one thing that I was sort of screaming all the way from when they thought about what they were going to do with Topa before Topa decided what he wanted to do is I was just like, just let Isaac do it. He's not a member of the crew. Well, he's a member of the crew, but he's not a member of the union. And yeah, like when they come up with a solution, it was a bit of a mood lightener with the episode with all the crew having to get on the one story. And I'm not going to ruin it if you haven't seen it, but they go to an event hosted by Bortus. And again, this picks up one of the sort of threads of the earlier seasons where we've seen Bortus do karaoke. And yeah, I'll just leave it there. But Clyden at the end, man, that last scene with him and Isaac, I don't like that they're making him the bad guy. I get that it works and it fits with the story, but Chad Coleman that plays Clyden is one of my favourite actors since I've seen him years ago in The Wire. He's popped up in loads of stuff like The Expanse and it's always sunny. He's such a diverse and great actor. I don't like that they're taking him out of the show, so I hope that he is going to be back. <laughs> And if you've made it this far, and if you're going off on the fact that this is woke, enforcing agendas, or whatever, good! I've just wasted your time by watching this video. These stories need to be told and heard and dealt with. And if you're that unhappy about it, you know, TNG done something pretty similar 30 plus years ago, and I'm sure that you liked that show well enough, you just ignore that episode, so kindly. Oh. But yeah, this is maybe the best episode I still like last week's because there was a lot of action stuff going on but in terms of the writing this is the best episode of the Orville maybe ever. Let me know if you agree on that in the comments below. I really liked what they were dealing with, how they dealt with it, all the sort of different dynamics and levels and things that were going on and yeah I just don't know where this show is going to go next because we've just had such a sort of varying swing in quality. The first one was okay, the second and third ones weren't, you know, alright. The fourth one I thought was brilliant, this week was absolutely brilliant as well. But again, let me know what you think in the comments below of the Orville Season 3 New Horizons. How is it going for you? Do you like what they've done in this episode? Where do you think it's going to go next? If you've made it this far, please leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. As always, I'm Al, thanks for watching.